Welcome back to the NPH Hour on News Talk Saga 960 AM. I'm your host, Jason Tom. Kevin Pangos is a great Canadian basketball success story, and even though his name was not on the list for the Victoria qualifier, he is very much in the mix with the national program. But it became a little complicated because he is without a contract for next season and he needs to protect his own health as he is currently one of the most sought-after point guards in Europe thanks to the work he has put in and the lessons learned throughout his career. Currently playing in the top league in Russia in the playoffs right now. Kevin, not sure if you know, you're probably the most talked about Canadian overseas right now in the basketball social media world. But my first question to you is about your daughter turning two years old later this year. How much do you credit having two years of being a father under your belt to maybe the comfort level and the success you're seeing on the floor? It kind of makes it all a little simpler when you go out and get to play this game, doesn't it? Yeah, it's it's interesting you ask that because um, it's something that's really hard to put in words. I think, I think uh, you know, having my daughter, um, I just had to become a bigger man. You know, I had to grow as a person, and um, I always say this that as athletes, um, we're on the court as human beings. You know, so developing our, ourselves as people is is just as important as developing a jump shot. And I think. Um, you know, having my daughter and putting that responsibility, my wife and myself, um, was huge. And it kind of puts things in perspective too, because, um, you know, whether you're having a bad game or missed a big shot or something, um, you go home and your your daughter doesn't know any different, you know, it's just dad coming home. And that's kind of refreshing at the end of the day. It's something that, um, just kind of puts the big picture, um, in place and you can kind of see it as a whole. And, um, you don't put as much emphasis on those little things that don't really matter at the end of the day. And so it's it truly is special. And I've been enjoying it as a dad and, and loving it. You mentioned, and I have to ask about the real MVP, your wife, Kate. You met her at Gonzaga where she was a soccer player. How much does it help since she understands what it means to be an athlete and at a very high level? Yeah, she's been unbelievable. Um, you know, ever since I first met her um, up until now, she's, She's helped me so much with my, my career and helped me grow as a person as well. And um, she's been there along the whole way, you know. And so having her, like you said, as an athlete in college, um, it was huge. She understands the commitment, the sacrifice you need to make. Um, she understands basketball, which is great. I can talk to her about the game and, and we discuss things like that. But um, at the end of the day, she, she knows we're part of a team. You know, I'm out there playing and stuff, but um, she contributes just as much. You know, when we're at home, she's help me eat right. She's, you know, let me get a little extra sleep. She's talking me through it when I'm doing well, doing bad. So um, she's been amazing. Uh, my rock through this all. And um, I'm glad you asked that because I really don't give her enough credit publicly as I should. I, I tell her all the time, but, but publicly, I don't, I don't say it very often. And I really should, because she does a ton for me. Hey, Kev, you know, you know, I'm here for you, man. I'm, I'm here yeah, to throw yeah, you the lobs. Like I know you're the point yeah, guard, but I'm here to throw you a lob here there as well, man. So, like that. Um, take me back to the beginning of your pro career and, and, you know, full disclosure, you know, Kevin, I keep up kind of throughout his pathway. And the one that I love the most was the first place you signed Grand Canaria. And I was kind of hitting you up saying like, looks like it'd be pretty nice over there, pal. You're living on an island at the mouth of the Mediterranean Sea, just off the coast of Morocco. And I mean, you're a young couple out of college. Yeah. What was that, what was that experience like for you? Like, pretty nice way to start off life together, huh? Yeah, it was unbelievable. And it was also horrible at the same time. And I'll really? explain why. It was, it was amazing because it was, we both went out there and Grand Canary is everything advertised. The lifestyle was great. Um, we were on an island. And, um, you know, first pro career, we're like, this is, this is what being a pro is like. This is awesome. You know, we're getting paid a little money finally, like, so we can go to some restaurants. It's great. But it's also, it was a curse because we thought that's how it was always going to be. You know, <laughs> and So we thought it was going to be sunny and 75 year round. We were going to be eating, you know, seafood on the beach. And, and so um, that was a little wake up call, but, but to be honest, that was, that was amazing. That experience in Grand Canary. And um, we definitely cherish those times and look back and, um, have great memories of it. And I think, again, we grew as people that year as well, you know, his first year overseas, uh, being away from family, which is obviously difficult and stuff, mm-hmm. but um, being in a great situation in Spain was, um, was enjoyable for sure. And you lead that team to the Euro cup semis next up, you're in Lithuania, your team 
was involved in some great rivalries. And for those that don't know, just explain Lithuania, what basketball means to that country and the squad you were with. I know from a basketball standpoint, like that, that was, that must've been kind of heaven for you. Yeah. Lithuania was unbelievable to play in, uh, for basketball. Um, definitely colder in the Grand Canaria. <laughs> that's what I was talking about when I said that, but for basketball, it was unbelievable because, um, for people that might not understand, like basketball in Lithuania is, is everything. Um, you know, you would think maybe a Northern country like that would be hockey or be something that, you know, skiing, I don't know, something else, but basketball is everything. And, and there's basketball hoops outside everywhere. There's um, the games, the arena fits like 15, 16,000 people. And like the city isn't that big. I think it, doing the math, it's like 10% of the city or 20% of the city can actually like come into the arena for those games. It's like ridiculous, you know? And so, um, everyone is just supporting the sport and you walk through the streets and there's kids that um, come up to you and, you know, talk about how they enjoy your game. And um, just the support you feel is, is amazing. And in, in that arena, it's electri electrifying too. They get pumped up during those games and no matter who you're playing, it's, it's awesome. And so, but when I do look back at the, at that point, eight years, it was unbelievable. The amount of, amount of things, the amount of growth that I experienced through that time, you know, going, going to college, there was so many great things, so many friends I met, but there were some tough times too, you know, and, and those things that I almost cherish just as much as the, as the good times and coming overseas, same thing. Um, the, the parts I remember most that I think benefited me, no, I know benefited me were the tough times. There were so many moments where, where I was really, really struggling. Um, sometimes by myself, cause my wife was back home or my girlfriend at the time. Um, and sometimes she was out here with me and we'd have to, you know, get through it together. But um, there was a lot of ups and downs and stuff, but definitely I, I'm fortunate that I had all those different experiences. Um, I met so many different people and had so many opportunities with uh, playing big games basketball wise and playing against good competition and in different countries and everything. And um, I think it shaped who I am today, which I'm, I'm so thankful for. So what were the downtimes? And maybe that's leading me into my next question. Was it, was it when you were injured in, in Barcelona? Like what were the toughest, the toughest times for you? Was it when you were alone? Um, that was one of them for sure. Um, I'd say in college, it was early on freshman year. Um, actually, it was right when I got, I have a bunch of stories with it, but uh, long story short, I got to school and one of the first workouts, I, I tried to lift weights and impress people because I, I wanted to be that freshman that, that proved himself. And I couldn't move my arms for like a week, not even like a week, actually a week. And so now I'm trying to shoot a basketball and pick up in drills and, and I I'm airballing shots and I'm thinking like, man, these guys think I absolutely suck, you know, because I can't all because of one, of the, I didn't do a lot of weights before I went mm -hmm, to school. Mm -hmm. And, and mentally that was just a killer. Cause now I'm, I'm trying to climb out of a hole that I just put myself in because I was trying to prove myself and everything. And, and so Things like that, freshman year, a lot of ups and downs. Some games I played horrible. I think I shot like 0 for 12 or something one game, something ridiculous. Like there were a lot of those ups and downs. Um, internationally, my first year in Lithuania, um, the coach challenged me a ton. Um, and he was really hard on me, which which I look back now and I'm so thankful for because um, getting through that, I proved a lot to myself. And, and I think I grew a lot as a person, um, which helped me on the court as well. Um, and so that, that was a great opportunity for me at the time. I didn't think so, but it was definitely one of those moments. And then my injuries as well, um, mm -hmm. just to name a few those mentally, it's, it's one of those things that um, when you're injured and you're not able to play um, you, mentally more than anything, yes, you're physically injured, but mentally it's, it's such a battle because especially if you don't know if you're going to get healthy, if you need surgery, when's it going to get better? Everyone's asking all these questions and sometimes questioning, are you actually injured? And all these different factors, um, you know, play a, play a role when you really want to be out there and prove yourself. And so um, a lot of difficulties, but like I said, all these moments, you know, I think help you grow and um, you just got to make the most of them. So in Barcelona, another great place to live, but you're injured and then you welcome your firstborn child during that same time. Looking back, do you think maybe like that timing was meant to happen? So you were able to be there and, and enjoy the, the, like the crucial point, the beginning of, of your daughter's life. It's funny that you asked that because I actually got injured. I was going to go on a trip. Um, and I, I actually got injured two days before we left. Um, and so we were actually going to plan the birth 
for my wife so I could be there on a certain day that I could be there. Something like this. I'm messing up a little bit. But I got injured two days before I was going to leave. And so um, sure enough, I could be there now for the birth of my daughter. And so whatever you think with this and that, but I do believe that things happen for a reason, like you just said. And um, it was a blessing because now I was there to see the birth of my daughter. Um, I was there for her first you know, a couple months and whatever growing up, I was changing diapers. I was putting her to sleep. I was full dad mode. Obviously the injury sucked, but there were other, other blessings that came about it. And that was one of them for sure. And so, um, and obviously then the pandemic hit. So I had a yes. lot of time with my family. So you're, you're rehabbed, ready to go pandemic hits. And now you're this professional athlete that has to train in your apartment. But I remember reading the things that you were doing, and it reminded me a lot about the first time that I came up to do a story in your childhood home and where you used to just lay on your back and do the form shooting with the wrist and you'd go in your basement and do the dribbling off the wall. Was it like a weird full circle moment that you were back to that sort of training, but here you are now as a pro instead of like a, a kid ready to go out to Gonzaga? Yeah, that's interesting you say that because... I definitely had experience of being locked in a small space and having to try and make the most of it. Um, cause yeah, as a kid, I, I would, I'd shoot on the spot or I'd dribble in the basement or, um, you know, pass against a mattress, those types of things. And so I wasn't quite doing that. We were in an apartment. So I don't think, I don't think the walls <laughs> would, would handle that. Um, but I definitely did modify. We, we got a stationary bike on our balcony out there and the weather was nice. So we, we definitely did that. Um, and doing workouts out there every single day during nap time when my daughter was napping. Yeah, so that was yeah. our, our time to do it. Um, and then the other things I got into were, were a lot of like meditation and, and breathing actually. And I'm obsessed with it now. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've been doing it a ton recently and I, there is more of a trend. I think people are realizing that the uh, breathing techniques and stuff is important and everything. So, um, I got dialed into that during the, the pandemic and it's something that I've kind of taken off with this year and been, been doing it a ton because during season, you know, breathing is something you can do. You, you can only lift so many weights. You can only shoot so many basketballs when you need to rest during a season. But um, breathing is is free. You know, it's, it's something you, can, you do every day anyway. So um, just focusing on that is, is something that you can improve and it's not going to affect, um, you know, you're not going to get tired of it or anything like that and affect your game. So um, it's something I've definitely enjoyed doing. And that was something that I've, I've um, added, I guess, to my repertoire recently. I called Julius on a few weeks ago. He's coaching in Taiwan, obviously trained you at a young age. Uh, we talked about you and he said, the reason why you're so successful right now is because you've mastered the basics. Mm -hmm. For a young player out there listening, what does that mean so that they can do the same sort of thing or try to get themselves ready to master those basics? Uh, because it seems like we're getting away from the basics right now in this social media age. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Honestly, I, I don't know exactly where Kyle was going with that, but I, my guess is that he was just saying that the basic foundation of skill work, you know, it's, um, I think, I think from a young age, that's something that I, I definitely try to do, especially, you know, that's all I really knew how I didn't always have an open gym to, to play in and, and pick up and all this kind of stuff. And so, um, the way I was always getting better was skill work was just getting out on the road, getting my shots up, getting out there and do my ball handling drills. Um, and, and just developing my skills from, from the ground up. And, um, and since then I've definitely, you know, taken it off and, and learn more about what skills I need to develop. You know, it's not just go out there and shoot, shoot 500 shots like I used to, or whatever it was. It's, it's more like, okay, how am I going to make the most of these shots? You know, if I shoot 10 and they're, they're really meaningful and I know why I'm shooting them this way, because I'm going to get in this situation and my defenders here and all that kind of stuff that's going to be way more beneficial than just hucking up 500 for, for no purpose, you know? And so um, I've done both. I've repped it out and now I've, I've gotten more smart and I guess detailed with, with my practice, which I feel like has helped me take my game to another level. And so um, if I would were to recommend things, that would be it, you know, know why you're doing something. Um, you know, there's one thing to, to work hard. And I believe that when I was younger, I was a really hard worker, but I don't know if I was the smartest worker. You know, and I think as I've gotten older, that's what I've really developed is, is being smart with how I work and, and purposeful and not just wasting my time and, and doing something that looks good or that sounds good. You know, it's more like um, applicable, like this is why I'm doing this. And I know it's going to benefit me when I'm in this situation on the court, if that kind of makes sense. And, um, you know, I think that's where Kyle was kind of going with, with what he mentioned. 
and shout out to Kyle, good. shout out to Kyle too. He's helped me a lot, helped me a lot. So I got to give him credit growing up. He, he was great for me and, and helped me develop my game a ton. Um, when I worked with them, moving on, you played against Luka Doncic before he got into the NBA. You've played against and with a number of former NBA players, close friend and Kelly Olenek, who's enjoyed success now with three different teams in the NBA. How much do you still think about the NBA? And do you think you will play there one day? Yeah, it's definitely something that's on my mind. It's um, For me, it's always been to, to play at the highest level. You always want to play with the, the best in the world. And so um, it's, it's something that's on my mind. Who knows what's going to happen? You know, um, there's so many factors involved. I have to think about my family, um, what's best for them as well. Um, there's, there's so many different factors. But um, when I see guys like Kel is doing so well out there, when I see Luka Doncic playing so well, guys like Campazzo, who's doing really well for Denver, and I played against him a ton, I'm really happy for all those guys. They deserve it. Um, and it's, it's definitely something that I, I would like to probably do in my career, but um, only if the time's right. And so we'll see going forward. At, at the time, I'm just trying to focus on myself and say, you know, if, if I improve the product, then everything's going to work out. And so uh, in the meantime, just focus on continuing to develop as a person and a player. And then, um, you know, wherever I'm meant to be is, is where I'll end up going. Um, that's what I truly believe in. I mentioned you're one of the most talked about Canadians playing internationally right now. One of the biggest things always asked is about the national team. So I have to ask, um, you know, what is your current status for Victoria and, and having and asking that question there is a lot that goes into that commitment as well. So, you know, what, where are you at with that? And, and obviously what would go into that decision for you? Yeah, for sure. It, playing for the national league is something that I, I always want to do um, from a young age. It's when I was 15 years old, I think was the first time I wore the, the Canada Jersey and I had so much pride in it. It was amazing. Um, and so playing for the national team and, and bringing the national team to the Olympics is something that's on my list, high on my list. Um, but for this summer, I'm not sure. I, I definitely have to talk to my family. There's so many other factors um, that, that go into it. Uh, I got to talk to them. My contract situation, I don't know what, what's going to happen with that yet. Um, so, so if the time's right and, and it works, then it's something that I want to do and help Canada get to the Olympics. Um, but if not, it's something that I might have to postpone for the future. So it's, it's in discussions right now. There's a lot of gray area and everything, but um, just know that it's one of those things that's high on my list and I have so much pride for playing, playing for our country. Yeah, no doubt about that. And you keep mentioning when you were 15, and as I remember Leo Routens put you into that game to break his record as being the youngest Canadian male player to play at a yeah. senior men's national team game. And that was something that he, he thought long and hard about and knew that you were somebody who would value that. So no doubt that we know that you are committed to this country. And, and last question, because I really want to make sure people out there who don't know Kevin Pangos, you know, you stayed at your local high school throughout your teens, yeah. did not play an AAU or club game until your senior season. And at that point, you'd already committed to Gonzaga, right? Yeah. You played four years at Gonzaga. Now you're one of the most talked about Canadian Canadians playing overseas. And I know you want to look forward, but I'm going to force you to look back. Okay. How proud are you of the journey to this point? Because you really did it your way. And, and, you know, the whole bet on yourself mantra, you did, man, and you've won. Yeah, you're right. I, I don't like looking back and, and making it seem like I've gotten somewhere yet because I, I feel like I've got so much further to go. Um, but that being said, I'm, I'm definitely happy with the situation I'm in. And, and the reason is, like we've talked about this whole time, is, is because of the, the growth I feel. You know, it's not, not just because of, you know, some points I've scored in a game or because of, um, a team I played for, games I've won or something. That stuff's amazing, but it's because I feel like I, I continue to grow, you know, in, in each aspect and everywhere I go. And so um, that's what I continue to look for going forward. You know, what I do look forward is, is I want to continue growing. And I feel like that's the fun of it is in the journey is, is continue to go forward and, and, and grow nonstop. So um, I'm so thankful for Gonzaga. I'm, I'm so thankful for um, all these pro teams over here for the national team. All that stuff's been incredible for me. I've had so many great experiences and so many great teammates and friends and everything. Um, and that's what part of this makes it so special, you know, that I've really enjoyed this, this ride so far. I want to keep it going as long as I can. Kevin Pangos, father, husband, son, brother, dog, dad. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but man, I don't know anybody. I don't think anybody in my life I've met that more people cheer for and want to see succeed than yourself. And it's because of who you are. And I think that will be your legacy beyond the basketball. Congratulations, man. I know there's more to come, but the journey has been awesome. No, thank you, JT. Really appreciate it. Um, you're a great friend. i uh, been there since whatever it was that first interview way back. Um, and I'm really glad to see you doing so well as well. So um, great, great reconnecting. This has been fun. And uh, no, just uh, thank you for the kind words and everything, but we're, we're going to keep growing both of us. It's going to be awesome. Over the next few weeks, I will continue to bring you interviews with some of our overseas pros that just finished up their seasons and also ones that you'll be seeing competing on your screens at the Olympics because Cheering on an athlete is great, but to cheer them on as people is even better. Only one team can win, or in the context of individual sports in the Olympics, only one person can win. But as both Kevin Pangos and Miranda Ayim told us today, it's the journey and the self-improvement throughout that time. Well, that's what the reward really is. I hope you enjoyed this edition of the NPH Hour. All of our interviews can be found on the North Pole Hoops YouTube channel. You can find us at NorthPoleHoops.com and on Instagram at North Pole Hoops. Until next week, this is Jason Tom. You are listening to News Talk Saga, 960 AM.